Radio Station. Three seconds to go. The Florida Panthers have won the Stanley Cup. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney Studios. The man, your man could smell it. Theo Dorsey is theoretically speaking. But are you a different animal and the same beast? What does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Streaming live on YouTube. Here's Theo Dorsey. They haven't stopped partying yet, and I don't blame them out in sunrise all through Fort Lauderdale in South Florida at Hull. The 2024 Stanley Cup champions reside in South Florida. The Florida Panthers made it happen. Shout out to the Rat Pack and all the fans. I'm so glad. I'm so happy for this fan base. Not just the fact that they fended off Canada, right? I mean, it's been since 93 a Canadian team has won the, uh, the Stanley Cup have brought Lord Stanley back to its probably native land. When you think about how much Canadians love hockey, well, now, well, Lord Stanley Cup runs through Florida. The last five years, we've had a team from Florida, whether it be the Lightning or the Panthers, in the final. In three of the last five years, we've seen them hoisted up, winning the final game of the season, including last night, Game 7 of the Stanley Cup final. 2-1 Cats. And we got to see those rats all over the ice such a celebration, such a good time. And I'll also see, Kat, I will tell you, I had a lot of FOMO uh, because of all of my TV friends, all of the pals, all of the Rat Pack that were able to be in the house at Amherst Bank Arena. Um, it, it was sad to watch it from the couch and not be in the ambiance of it all. But what I will say is slightly more happy today because we got a champion in South Florida on the first professional sports title since 2013 out here. How did you consume last night's game, CCAT? I was at home as well, but I will say, those Florida Panthers fans, they represented South Florida very well. Oh, yeah. It's a fan base in terms of region that gets a lot of flack for their hardcore fan in this. We heard them loud and clear last night. Certainly did, and we know Theoretically Speaking is brought to you by today, Hard Rock Bet, the Florida Panthers coming out on top, and you know that it's UFC 303 this weekend. Um, it's also Fight Week here on Theoretically Speaking um, with Hard Rock Bet, and I, I had to take a peek. I had to take a peek at the Florida Panthers' odds ahead of the 2025 season um, to see if they could repeat. Do tell. And on Hard Rock Bet, I took a look. The Florida Panthers plus 1,000 to win the cup next year. We're already talking 2025. The team with the shortest odds, though, right above them, those Edmonton Oilers at plus 900. That's kind of a good thing for Cat fans, right? Like, I'm actually excited for that because that means people are respecting the competition that you went up against. It is uh, further fortifying your championship run when the competition is that much more respected those odds on Hard Rock Bet, if you're wanting to jump on that, I know you've already heard Hard Rock Bet is legal in Florida. And if you didn't know already, I'm sure you've heard the jingle. It's the only legal place to bet on sports. It's fight week here at ESPN 106.3, and Hard Rock Bet has you covered. You can bet the entire card on Saturday night. Knockouts, submissions, over-under, total rounds, and so much more. And again, you could even put in that that future on those Panthers to repeat as champions in the Stanley Cup final. Try Hard Rock Bet out right now. A no regret first bet up to 100 bucks. That means if you don't win, you get your full $100 back up to it at least if you bet that much. And yes, I will repeat that. If you don't win on your first bet, you can get all of it back up to $100. Hard Rock Bet is Florida Sportsbook offered by the Seminole Tribe of Florida. Must be 21 plus and physically present in Florida to wager Terms and conditions apply. Concerned about gambling? Call 1-888-ADMITTED. And the full Florida Panther squad still in South Florida celebrating their championship because unlike the Boston Celtics, celebrating at home is a natural party environment. Do you think anybody even considered for one moment flying to Boston in a way to commemorate uh, the achievement that everybody came together and did last night in Sunrise? Not for a millisecond. Like, no. A- and if there's any of the South Florida pro teams that would consider taking a flight to Boston, you would think maybe the hockey squad, right? Like you're not getting that from the Dolphins. You're definitely not getting it from the Heat. Maybe the hockey squad, squad because Boston's kind of more of a hockey town. It's like the Joakim Noah. Like no one ever vacations in Cleveland. <laughs> like no one wants to celebrate their championship in Boston. Not even the Celtics. So once again, 
Jokes on you. If, if you're not a fan of hockey, if you weren't as locked into the Stanley Cup Finals, I do think what the Florida Panthers were able to do, not just in winning this Cup Final after being one year removed from falling to Vegas in five games, uh, but also this series going seven games, extending all the way out to a Monday night where the Panthers had the world stage all to themselves, no NBA Finals to compete with, no major sporting events, no major in golf to compete with. It was all about Lord Stanley Cup on a Monday night primetime television. You had Stephen A. Smith in the house. You had Charles Barkley in the arena. It was literally the main show and the only thing in town. And that's why, to me, though if you're a Panthers fan, I'm sure you would have been happy to have sealed this thing up in four. The best thing for not just the sport of hockey, but even for the Oilers and specifically for this Panthers squad and its fan base was that this thing did drag all the way out to seven, that it did get contentious, that there was a bit of dreariness around whether or not the Panthers would have what some were considering the greatest collapse in all of sports, but it culminated in the Panthers being resilient. When you put them up against the wall in the corner and back them up for the first time in this uh, Stanley Cup playoffs, uh, first time they were facing elimination, they proved exactly what they needed to do. Sergei Bobrovsky was back to being playoff Bob after three games of letting goals fly through. I think 18 points, 18 goals scored on the Panthers in the past three games. They were fortified and they made it happen. And no person I'm more uh, excited for, no person I feel more joy for than the head coach of the Panthers, Paul Maurice. Going into this one, a lot of the headlines were about how Paul Maurice has coached the most games in the NHL without winning a Stanley Cup final. How he's lost the most games in all of hockey uh, when it comes to coaching and Paul Maurice over 700 games. But the amount of perspective that this guy has and the way that he's able to gain from those losses, from being in the Valley and realizing how much that makes you appreciate the mountaintop. I mean, all you got to go, do is go right to what you heard from Paul, Paul Maurice on the ice moments after winning the Stanley Cup uh, final with the Florida Panthers. This interview alone will make you fall in love with the character and also just the, the overall presence of what Paul Maurice means to this fan base. What'd you say? Oh, I've been chasing that for a while. Was unkind words about how hard she was to catch. What makes this team special? I got off the phone with them the summer I took the job, and I kept telling my wife, these guys are different. It's the way they treat each other. They, they, like, they love each other. It starts with Barkov, and it filters down. So we have nine new guys on this year, and then we brought in Oposo and Tarasenko, and you can't tell they haven't been here 10 years. It's so got nothing to do with the coach, nothing to do with that. That room has been special since day one. But there's nothing easy, so we needed to lose three in the finals to learn how to win four. And the fact that it was so hard makes it so special. That he summed up perfectly. I, I feel like a lot of times, especially in sports, you're not judged by just how great you are. You're judged by how tough your competition is, right? Like even going back to the biblical days, like the reason why we sing the praises of, of David is because he beat Goliath, right? If David beats a dude his size, nobody's going to respect that victory as much. And I do believe if the Panthers would have wrapped this thing up in four, we're not getting the major headlines and the major size of relief and the major amount of attention that we got on this Stanley Cup final that we're getting on a day like today. Not just because of the other sports distractions that were going on, but also because of the fact that you felt like the Panthers went up against the wall and earned something. There were a lot of people that thought once they lost three in a row, the momentum was so far in the Edmonton Oilers side of the ice that they wouldn't be able to recover. But they were able to, partially thanks to the leadership of Paul Maurice, but also the performance of all of the guys on the ice, all of the lines for the Panthers that came through last night in the big moments there. So I'll, I'll say it, Seacat. I'm not sure. I mean, I know you're not a Panthers fan, and I'd love to hear from the Panthers fans. 888-760-3776. 888-760-3776. Winning in seven was much more beneficial to the lore of the Florida Panthers and the appreciation of this journey than it would have been if they won in four. It would have been a footnote or more so of a footnote to anybody outside of South Florida if these Florida Panthers didn't almost suffer one of the biggest collapses in sports. But since they did 
and then overcame it in the end, this, to me, was almost like a perfect scenario, let alone the amount of money they made off the gates. <laughs> yeah, the, the sweet isn't sweet without the sour, right? Like having the pain, having the doubt, having the drama about maybe we won't achieve this lifelong goal hoisting Lord Stanley yeah. makes the moment that those final horns go off and you get to lift the trophy makes it so much better. Well, if you know you're going to win it the whole time, you sweep that, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. You'll take it. But it doesn't get better than facing potential disaster and not having a disaster. Yeah, and let's hear from the Rat Pack. If you're a Panthers fan and you've been along this journey, maybe even since the early 90s when the Panthers were incepted, or maybe you're a recent fan that moved here and you've been with them for the past decade or so, did you prefer the games going all the way to Game 7, or would you have preferred it wrapped up in 4? 888-760-3776. 888-760-3776. Because I think, undoubtedly, it was better for the sport the team, and even its fan base to to garner that much more appreciation out of the journey being a little bit more tough, a little more thick. Hit us up on the Baptist Health Hotline. Are you experiencing foot and ankle pain and need to see an expert in the field? Well, Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has a team of foot and ankle orthopedic surgeons and specialists who are regarded as leaders in their specialty. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho to learn more today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care combines its resources of experienced physicians and leading-edge treatments and technology to provide advanced orthopedic, foot and ankle, joint replacement, spine, and sports medicine care. Visit baptisthealth.net slash ortho for more information today. Baptist Health Orthopedic Care has offices conveniently located in Palm Beach County through the Florida Keys. Learn more by visiting baptisthealth.net slash ortho. The Florida Panthers overcome the wrath of the best player in the sport in Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. They get the win in Game 7. They get the Stanley Cup Final Trophy for the very first time in franchise history. And most importantly, they keep keep the Canadians waiting. They end the South Florida drought, but they continue the desert that is uh, Canadian teams in the NHL winning the Stanley Cup Final. Uh, There was one problem I had with Panthers fans this uh, this past week, or not this past week, but last night going into this morning that I saw happening out at Fort Lauderdale Beach, and we do need to address it because, see, Cat, you think I'm wrong, but I think uh, that these fans just embarrassed themselves in an epic way. We'll we, ask yeah. we'll ask Uncle Steve about it as well. Mm-hmm. We got a shouting match before the show about yeah. this topic. It, it, it did get a little ugly. Apparently, I might be leaning on the side of toxic masculinity, but, hey, I, 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 I am who I am. I'm a principled man. We'll ask Uncle Steve about it on the other side as well as ask him about some of the big things happening in the in the NBA, like J.J. Redick being so excited about his coaching job, he's just yelling out cuss words. Uh, that's CCAT. I'm Theo Dorsey. To get around this next, we're theoretically speaking on ESPN 106.3. Live from the Anajar and Levine Accident Attorney.